The Sunni extremist group Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, launched a series of attacks and car bombings in Iraqi cities, including Baghdad, Samarra, Ramadi, and Jalala over the last 10 days, culminating in the capture of Mosul on Tuesday. From Mosul, ISIL with other armed groups took control of the towns on the main route to Baghdad, including Tikrit, 110 miles north of the capital. The Iraqi security forces initially proved unable to resist these attacks, although there are now signs of a fight back in the area around Samarra. These are extremely grave developments. ISIL is the most violent and brutal militant group in the Middle East. It has a long record of atrocities, including use of IEDs, abductions, torture, and killings. The reported massacre of 1,700 Shia Air Force recruits is more evidence of its brutality. ISIL's aim is to establish a Sharia Islamic state in the region, and it is pursuing these goals by attacking the government of Iraq, gaining control of territory, and inciting sectarian violence between Sunni and Shia Muslims. The group has bases in northern Syria as well as in Iraq. While the majority of its members are Iraqi or Syrian, it also includes a significant number of foreign fighters among its ranks. As I've previously told this House, we estimate the number of UK-linked individuals fighting in Syria to include approximately 400 uh, British nationals and other UK-linked individuals who could present a particular risk should they return to the UK, and some of these inevitably are fighting with ISIL. Over the last few days, I've held discussions with foreign ministers from the region, including with Iraqi Foreign Minister Zebari and Turkish Foreign Minister Davutoglu, with whom I discussed the welfare of over 60 Turkish citizens kidnapped in Mosul. Our national interest lies in supporting a sovereign and democratic Iraq to resist these threats, offering assistance where necessary, and working with others to prevent the spread of terrorism in Iraq and throughout the region. On Friday, I held talks with Secretary Kerry here in London. We agreed that the prime responsibility for leading the response to these events lies with the Iraqi government. The United States, which is the country with the most appropriate assets and capabilities, is considering a range of options that could help the Iraqi security forces push back on ISIL advances. President Obama has been clear that action taken by the United States will only succeed if accompanied by a political response from the Iraqi government. We are taking action in three areas, promoting political unity among those who support a democratic Iraqi state and stability in the region, offering assistance where appropriate and possible, and alleviating humanitarian suffering. We have made it clear that this does not involve planning a military intervention by the United Kingdom. On the first of these points, yesterday I underlined to the Iraqi Foreign Minister the need for his colleagues to form a new and inclusive government that brings together all Iraq's different groups and that is able to command support across Iraqi society. ISIL is taking advantage of political disaffection, including among Saddam-era officers and soldiers and Sunni tribal fighters who have lost trust in the Iraqi government. Overcoming this will require a concerted political effort by the government, including working with the Kurdistan regional government against this common threat. I welcome the fact that the Iraqi Supreme Court has today ratified the large majority of the results of April's elections, and I call on them to announce the full results as soon as possible to allow for the rapid formation of a new government in Baghdad. On our second objective, we are examining what more we can do to assist the Iraqi authorities directly in their security response. We are urging them to take effective measures to organize security forces effectively and push ISIL back from the areas it has occupied while protecting civilian life, infrastructure and vital services. We are discussing with the Iraqi government areas for cooperation, including the possibility of offering counterterrorism expertise. We are also providing consular assistance to a small number of British nationals who have been affected. For this purpose, a UK MOD operational liaison and reconnaissance team arrived in Baghdad on Saturday to help assess the situation on the ground and assist the embassy in contingency planning. 
Third, we have responded rapidly to the humanitarian emergency. Around half a million people are reported to have been displaced in the north and now need urgent support. Last week, we were the first donor country to send a field team to the Kurdistan region, where they met UN and NGO contacts and the Kurdish authorities. My right honourable friend, the International Development Secretary, announced on Saturday that we would provide £3 million of immediate assistance, including £2 million from the Rapid Response Facility to NGOs for water and sanitation and other emergency relief, and £1 million to the UNHCR for mobile protection teams and establishing camps. We're considering urgently what further assistance we can provide. The rise of sectarianism and religious intolerance is fueling instability in the Middle East. This has been compounded by the brutality of the Assad regime, whose relentless war against its own people has created an opening for extremists. That is why we will continue to support the moderate opposition in Syria, who have had the courage to fight directly against ISIL and other extremists, as well as urging the Iraqi government to take the political and military steps required to defeat such groups in Iraq.